Hi everyone, my name is Jeremy and I'd like to welcome you to our first ever virtual holiday club. Normally, of course, we do our holiday club at church with lots of games and activities and fun and gunging. Uh, sadly, we can't do that this year, but we're going to do some uh, things on the uh, YouTube channel, the Christchurch YouTube channel. And we're going to tell you some stories, have some quizzes, sing some songs, do some games and maybe even see someone get gunged today. So uh, welcome. I'm going to pray and then we're going to sing our first song, which is called Tidal Wave. Father, as we uh, come and learn more about you, as we come to have fun together, we pray that you'll uh, speak to us this morning. Amen. Well, our theme today is Jesus the Teacher. We're going to be looking at the story of the Good Samaritan, and it's all about loving God and loving each other. And God's love is like a, a tidal wave over each and every one of us. So this might be a new song for some of you, but it's got some really good actions. So do, do uh, sing along and join in if you can. You painted colors in the sky, made the clouds a tower high. We worship, we worship you. You scatter stars with holy hands, dusted rock with golden sands. We worship, we worship you. It's a beautiful world out there, simply awesome beyond compare. It's a beautiful world out there, and it's made by you we bow down Our voices in wonder and 
wonder where you like to go out to if you are going to go somewhere for the day. Maybe it's just to a, your local park or to a theme park, to the beach, to go and find a nice field to, to go for a walk in or play football. Our story is going to be about somebody who went on a journey. We'll find out more about him a little bit later on. But these pictures you can see are of a, a park, a little play field, and there's five differences. It's a simple spot the difference game. So can you spot the five differences in these pictures? Have a go at that. So how did you do with that spot the difference game? I'm going to ask Grace if she would just go through and show us the five answers. Grace, over to you. The first difference that I spotted was how the two kites in the pictures are different. The next one was the, in the first one there's a dog catching the frisbee, but in the other one there's a little girl catching the frisbee. Um, another one I spotted was in the pond, there's actually a fish in the pond, but in the first one there's a duck. Um, and also in the corner of the picture, instead of trees, there are buildings. And the final one was in the bird's nest at the bottom. There are three birds in one and two birds in the other. Grace, thank you very much. I wonder if you managed to spot all five differences just like Grace did. I wonder what you would take if you were going on a journey. What would you pack? Maybe some food? Map might be helpful. Your phone, maybe a compass some water to drink, what else might you take? Change of clothes, something to do when you get there. Well, our story today is about somebody who is going on a journey, but not, perhaps not a journey like we would take now. A journey of only 70 to 80 miles, which would not be a long journey for us, but this person would have been walking or at best on a donkey or, or a horse. It would take him several days. Imagine that, walking 80 miles in the hot sun through difficult paths. No wonder what he packed. Probably did take some water. I'm sure he had a bit of food as well. Maybe some spare bits and pieces to help him on his journey. Well, this person was traveling on a journey from Jerusalem to Jericho. So let's have a look at his story. This road was known as a dangerous road. It's more like a path actually, through the mountains, over some hills, along some rivers. And there were lots of caves up, up in the mountains. And it was known that bandits, that robbers would live in these caves and they would look for travelers to uh, come and, and steal from. So I'm sure that when this person was setting out on this journey, he was quite nervous. He was quite apprehensive about the journey. I was probably watching around to see what happened, taking great care, looking out for those robbers. And at first everything was fine. It was hard work, hot sun, hard path, his feet were getting tired, but the first day passed without any problems. He found somewhere to sleep, spend the night, and got ready for the second day of his journey. Morning went past, covered another 10 or 15 miles in the morning, I was thinking, I'm doing really well here. I've got nearly halfway on this journey and there's been no sign of trouble. Then he started to hear some sounds coming in the hills above him. Nervously, he glanced around to see what it was. Maybe it was just an animal up there. But then he spotted some people. Then he realized that the bandits were there and that he was gonna be their target. He looked around to see whether there was anyone who could help him but he was all by himself. Before he could run away, these bandits had come down from their secret hideaway and had attacked him and had knocked him to the ground and taken all his possessions. They left him there in a lot of pain, not knowing what to do. He couldn't move. His legs were so badly hurt, he couldn't get up and carry on on his journey. He was just lying there in the hot sun. His water would be running out very soon. There was little food left. He was starting to panic. What on earth is gonna to happen to me? 
Then a little bit later, he spotted somebody in the distance. At first he thought one of the robbers maybe was returning, but then as the person grew closer, he realised that this person was not dressed like a robber. In fact, this person was dressed like a very important person. And as they grew, ne grew nearer and came nearer, they saw this uh, victim lying there on the ground. And the traveller realised that this was one of the teachers from the synagogue and thought, well, this, this person's bound to help me. They, they teach about loving your neighbour. They teach about care for others. Of course they're going to help me. And called out, will you, will you help me? I'm hurt. But the teacher was scared. The teacher thought if they stopped, the robbers might come back. So the teacher passed to the other side of the road and went on by without helping. Imagine how that traveller felt. There hadn't been anyone for hours. They were in great pain. They just needed someone to look after them. And this teacher had ignored them. I wonder what they felt. And hours went by and no person came along. The water had gone by now, the food had gone, the sun was at its hottest and our traveller friend was just lying there, not knowing what to do, not knowing what to think. But then again in the distance they spotted another person Maybe this person will help me, they said. And as the person came closer, again the traveller saw that this was somebody very important. It was somebody who studied the law, a, a bit like a lawyer today. And so the traveller said, please, please help me. I've been attacked, I'm hurt, I just need somebody to help me. This person thought they were too important to help and stop a, a lonely traveller and quickly passed to the other side went on by, didn't stop, didn't say anything, didn't even share their water. The poor traveller had been abandoned again. Then a little bit later, another person came along. But this time the traveller didn't really have much hope because they recognised that this was a Samaritan. And the Samaritans were the enemies of the Jews. A traveller was a Jew and they just didn't get along with the Samaritans, they never had. This enmity had gone back hundreds and hundreds of years. They'd never got on. These two uh, peoples had always been at war, had always been fighting, had always been arguing. So the traveller wasn't expecting anything, was expecting this uh, Samaritan just to walk by and ignore them totally. And the traveller was shocked because it was the Samaritan who knelt down at their side. It was the Samaritan who helped bandage their wounds. It was the Samaritan who helped the traveller up onto their donkey. It was the Samaritan who took the traveller to the nearest village. It was the Samaritan who paid for the traveller to have the care that they needed. And even said, I'll come back in a couple of days to make sure that you're okay. And if you need to get any more medicines or any more care, I'll pay for that as well. Out of all the people he'd expected to help, the Samaritan was the last person, yet it was the Samaritan who wanted to help. That's a story that Jesus told, and he was asked the question, what do we need to do to have eternal life? What do we need to do to know that we're going to go to heaven? And Jesus said, well, what, what does the law say? And the uh, person who asked the question said, well, it tells us to love God. Love God with all our heart, soul, mind and strength and to love our neighbour as ourselves. And the question that's then said, well, well who's my neighbour? And that's when Jesus told the story to illustrate that our neighbour is everyone. We have a responsibility to look after each other, to care for each other. If we're going to follow Jesus, we need to love him with everything, with all we are. And we need to care for each other. It's a sign of our love for God. God, God loves us so much gave us Jesus. We need to love and care for each other. That's the story of the Good Samaritan. Hope you were listening because uh, a little bit later on we're going to have a quiz about that story. Before we do our quiz we're going to sing. One of the ways that we can show our love for God is by uh, living it out, shining it out in our lives, the way we live, the way we treat each other, the way we care for each other and that's what this song is about. It's called Shine from the inside out. 
So uh, shall we sing this song together? Three questions as you can see on the screen here. Where was the traveller heading? Was the traveller heading from Jerusalem or to Jericho or from Jericho to, to Jerusalem? Where were they heading, Jerusalem or Jericho? How many people didn't stop and help? Remember in the story some people didn't stop. Are there two people or three people who didn't stop and help? And the final question, where did the person who, who helped come from? Was that the Samaritan or was that the Jew who actually stopped and helped in that story that Jesus told? Make a note of your answers or just remember them and uh, let's go through and see how well you did. So Grace, the first question is where was the traveller heading? Was he going to Jerusalem or Jericho? He's going to Jericho. Well done. Now in Holiday Club we often use are different ways of scoring points and one of the ways we use is a dice and we uh, get you to the front don't we and you can roll the dice so if you if you wanted to you could go and get your dice pause the video go and get a dice and you can see how many points you sc score I compare that to grace so you could do that now if you want to uh, so grace why don't you roll the dice and uh, show us how many points you scored okay do you want to go and pick that dice up and just show us that score that was a three. Well done. So, next question. How many people didn't stop? Remember in the story, some people didn't stop. Was it two people didn't stop and help, or was it three people, Grace? It was two people. It was two people didn't stop. Uh, so, Grace, can you roll the dice? Okay, let's have a look. I think that might be a six. Well done. And final question. The third person, the one who did stop and help, was that a Jew or a Samaritan? It was a Samaritan. Of course it was, that's why we call it the Good Samaritan. <laughs> Remember the person who nobody expected to stop was the person who did stop. So final chance, so far you've got six and three, so that's nine. Let's see what we get here. It looks like a one, so we've got a minimum, a maximum. So Grace scored 10. I wonder if you uh, did that with your own dice, if you were able to score more than that. Thank you very much for your help, Grace. Well, that story, of course, comes from the Bible. And we're going to uh, try and learn one of the verses, one of the sentences in the Bible that's related to that story. So would you say this with me? Love the Lord your God. Love him with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind and all your strength and love your neighbour as you love yourself. That's from Mark chapter 12, verse 30. So as you can see, I've replaced some of the words with little pictures or icons, 
shall we see if we can do this. Love the Lord your God. Love him with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind and all your strength. And love your neighbour as you love yourself. Mark 12 verse 30. Love the Lord your God. Love him with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind and all your strength. And love your neighbour as you love yourself. Mark 12 verse 30. So we've got no words on the screen now. Do you think you can say the memory verse? Samuel's going to have a go at it as well, so over to you, Samuel. Love the Lord your God. Love him with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind and all your strength. And love your neighbour as you love yourself. Mark 12, verse 30. Well done, Samuel. How did you do? Did you remember that verse? It's a really important one because it reminds us of, of our one of the things we need to really try and do if we follow Jesus, to love God and to love each other. And as we do that, we, we become part of God's big family. That's going to be our final song in a moment, the big family of God. Before we do that, though, at Holiday Club, those of you who've been before know that we have a gunging at the end. So just for today, we're going to uh, gunge somebody. And uh, what we're going to do is just show the video. It's a virtual gunging of uh, somebody, one of the Holiday Club leaders, being gunged. So watch the video and then let's start sing that final song about being part of God's big family. Thanks very much for joining us and hopefully you'll watch our second session tomorrow. Three, two, one. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Well, that was pretty horrible, but before we have our final song, would you like to have a look at that in slow motion? Three, two, one. Oh. Some of us are big and tall, some of us